tell thee this, thou, today thou shalt see a subject die, for truth, for duty, and for loyalty. And now Margaret's curse has fallen upon our heads for standing by when Richard stabbed her son. Make haste to the hour of death, Vexpius. My lords, at once, the cause why we are met is to determine of the coronation. In God's name, speak, when is the royal day? <coughs> are all things fitting for that royal time? They are, and wants the nomination. Tomorrow, then, I judge a happy day. Who knows the Lord Protector's mind herein? Who is most inward with the royal duke? Your grace, we think, should best know his mind. Who I? <laughs> My lord, I. <laughs> we know each other's faces, but for our hearts, he knows no more of mine than I of yours. Nor I know more of his than you of mine. Lord Hastings, you and he are near in love. I thank his grace. I know he loves me well. But for his purpose in the coronation, I have not sounded him, nor he given his gracious pleasure any way therein. But you, my noble lords, may name the time, and in the duke's behalf, I'll give my voice, which I presume he'll take in gentle part. Now in good time, here comes the noble duke himself. Noble lords and cousins all, good mama. I have been long a sleeper. Have you not come upon your cue, my lord? My lord Hastings hath pronounced your part. Oh, I mean your voice for crowning of the king. Then, my lord Hastings, no man might be bolder. His lordship knows me well and loves me well. I thank your grace. Rockenbury. Yes, my lord? When last I was in Holborn, I saw good strawberries in your garden there. I do beseech you, send for some. I will, my lord, with all my heart. Cousin of Buckingham, a word with you? I have not set down this day of trial. Tomorrow, methinks, is too sudden. Where is the Lord Protector? I sent for the strawberries. Our Lord looks cheerfully and smooth today. I think there is never a man in Christendom who can less hide his love or hate than thee. For by his face straight shall you truly know his heart. I pray you, tell me what they deserve that do conspire my death with devilish plots of damned witchcraft, and that have prevailed upon my body with their hellish charms. The tender love I bear, your grace, my lord, makes me, in this noble presence, to doom the offenders. Whatsoever they be, I say they have deserved death. Then be your eyes the witness of this ill. See how I am bewitched. My arm is like a blasted sapling withered up. And this is Edward's wife, that monstrous witch, who with her witchcraft thus hath mocked me. If she have done this, my grace... Tell me thou of it, if thou art a traitor, open his head. Now by St. Paul's, I will not dine until I see the same. Whitecliffe, look that it be done. The rest that love me, rise and follow me. <laughs> Woe. <laughs> Woe for England. Not a word for me. For I too fond might have prevented this. Stanley did dream the Lord did praise its helm. But I disdained it, as it scorned it to fly. Three times my foot cloth forced its stumble, and startled to look upon the tower as loath to bear me to the slaughterhouse. Oh, Margaret, Margaret, now thy heavy curse is lighted on poor Hastings' wretched head. Dispatch, my lord. The duke would be at dinner. Make a short shrift. He longs to see your head. <laughs> Bloody Richard. Miserable <laughs> England. I prophesy the time to be that never wretched age have looked upon. Come, lead me to the block, bear in my head. This 
by allowing you to absorb the cell death. Here is the head of that ignoble traitor of the dangerous and unsuspected Hastings. So dear I loved the man that I must weep. I took him for the plainest, harmless creature that breathed upon this earth a Christian. Well, well, he was the covertest sheltered traitor that ever lived. <laughs> Go after. After Cousin Buckingham, the mayor told Gilpaul hires the men on post. There, at your meanest advantage at the time, infer the bastardry of Edward's children. Moreover, urge his hateful luxury and bestial appetite in charge of lust that extended unto their servants, daughters, wives, Nay, for need, though far come near my person, tell him that when my mother went with child of that unsatiate Edward, noble lord of York, my father then had wars in France, and by just computation of the time found that the issue was not of his begot. Oh, but touch this sparingly, as for far off, because, as you know, my lord, my mother lives. Fear not, my lord. I'll play the orator as if the golden fee for which I plead were for myself. And so, my lord, I do. Now will I, to take some privy order, and to give notice that no manner of person at any time have recourse unto the princes. 